Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. In this video, two more problems on a valuation of perquisite I'm going to do. So previous video, I have explained you about the meaning of the term perquisites, what are the different types of perquisites, how to calculate the value of perquisites. Remember, the components of salary are four. Salary, allowances, perquisite and profitability of salary. The total of these four is called gross income from salary. First of all, uh, among these four, the more important and difficult point is perquisite. The perquisite is any kind of benefit, either in cash or in kind, given by the employer to the employee or their family members. So if the perquisite, if the benefit is given in kind, then Income Tax Act has given the provisions how to calculate the value of that benefit. So important benefit was rent-free accommodation. The more important perquisite is rent-free accommodation. It is the house or flat which is provided by the employer to the employee for his residential purpose without charging any rent. That is called rent-free accommodation. So how to calculate the rent-free accommodation? Two types of accommodation are there, unfurnished, furnished. First, we have to calculate the value of unfurnished accommodation. To that, you add 10% of the cost of furniture provided or the higher charges paid by the employer, whatever is the case. We'll get the value of furnished accommodation. For the purpose of calculating value of rent-free uh, rent accommodation, <coughs> employees are classified into government, non-government. For government employee, rent fixed by the government is the value of the perquisite. No calculation, nothing. For non-government employee, we have to see whether accommodation is owned by the employer or hired by the employer. If it is owned by the employer, it depends on the population of the city where accommodation is provided. If it's a small town, 7.5% of salary. <clears throat> if it's a medium town, 10% of salary. If it's a big good town, 15% of salary. How to know small, medium, big? If the population of the town is less than 10 lakh, it is called small town, 7.5%. If the population is more than 10 lakh but up to 50, 25 lakh, it is called medium town, medium town, 10% of salary. If the population of the town is more than 25 lakh, it's a big town, then the value of the perquisite is 15% of salary. This provision will apply if the accommodation is owned by the employer. Suppose if the employer has taken the accommodation on hire and given it to the employee. In that case, <clears throat> list of the following two. Actual rent paid by the employer or 15% of salary. That's it. These are the provisions how to calculate rent-free accommodation. In the last video, six problems I have completed. Now in this video, two more problems, seventh and eighth, I am going to finish. That will be the end of the topic rent-free accommodation. Before starting the seventh problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. So take a printout and keep it ready. Take a screenshot of the solutions of seventh and eighth, then I will explain. See the seventh problem. Mr. Maheshwari Desai is working as a business development manager in a private company. SSC Mr. Maheshwari Desai, non-government employee. His salary particulars are as follows. Basic pay 15,500 per month. DA 13,000 per month. Nothing is given. So we will assume it, enter, it will not enter for retirement benefit. It is not entering for retirement benefit. Then family allowance, fully taxable, 7,200 per month. Hostel allowance, 18,000 per annum for two children. There is a provision regarding hostel allowance. The list of the following two will be exempted, remaining taxable. First one, actual allowance received. Second one, rupees 3,600 per annum per child for a maximum of two children. Whichever is least will be exempted, remaining is taxable. Then uh, academic research allowance 3700 per month. Actually academic research allowance is taxable for unspent amount. If the amount is spent, not taxable. Here 3700 per month out of which only 80% was spent. So remaining 20% is taxable allowance. 
he is provided with a rent free accommodation in Mumbai for 6 months only. That means we have to calculate the value of the perquisite only for 6 months. The accommodation was hired by the company for 13,000 per month and it was furnished at a cost of 35,000. So accommodation is not owned by the employer. Employer has hired it. So we have to take list of the following two. Hire charges paid by the employer or 15% of salary, whichever is less. That is the value of the unfurnished house. To that you add 10% of the cost of furniture. Compute is gross income from salary for the current assessment year. The current assessment year is 21-22. 2021-2022. This is the current assessment year. The previous year ends on 31st March 2021. 2021. That is the previous year. Right? So it is asking you to calculate gross income from salary. So in this table. In this table, I am calculating gross income from salary. Mr. Vaishwari Desai, computation of gross income from salary for the assessment year 21-22. Salary. The basic salary is given in the problem 15,500 per month into 12, 186,000 basic salary. Then allowances. First allowance DA. DA is fully taxable. So 13,500 into 12, 162,000. Then family allowance, fully taxable always. 7,200 into 12, 86,400. Hostel allowance. There is a provision. That's why first of all you should write on hostel allowance in bracket working note. Don't take the amount. In working note we'll calculate and find out the amount taxable. Just you write down hostel allowance in bracket working note. Keep it blank. Don't take the amount. Similarly academic research allowance in bracket you write on working note. Keep it blank. In working note we'll calculate. Then we have perquisites. Only three allowances or four allowances. Four allowances are there. DA. Family allowance, hostel allowance, academic research allowance. Then perquisite, one perquisite is the rent free accommodation. Again, you write on working note. Because all calculations you have to make in working note. Then after calculating rent free accommodation, the total is called gross income from salary. That's it. In this way, we have to find out gross income. Now one by one. First in working note, we are calculating the hostel allowance, taxable hostel allowance. The least of the following two is allowed as reduction. Then actual allowance received for two children. That means employer is giving hostel allowance to the employee for two children. The total amount received is 18,000. <coughs> Income Tax Act has given a fixed amount. 3,600 per annum per child for a maximum of two children. So here he got for two children, the fixed amount will also be taken for two children. So 3600 into 2, 7200. The least of these two is exempted. So 18,000 or 7200, whichever is least is exempted. 7200 is exempted. So actual allowance received 18,000 less exempted 7200. So taxable about 10,800. Now we got how much is the taxable hostel allowance 10,800 now take this 10,800 here earlier we have written but amount we have not taken after calculations we got amount similarly academic research allowance in working note academic research allowance received is 3,700 into 12 4400 exempted whatever amount he has spent that is exempted unspent is taxable how much amount spent? Amount spent 80% of 44,400, 35,520. Deduct. Unspent amount is 8,880. This is the unspent amount. It is taxable. Now take this 8880 over. Now you have to find out rent free accommodation. The SSC is a non government employee, right? And he got the accommodation only for six months. The employer has taken the accommodation on hire and employer is paying 13,000 per month. The SSC is working in private company and the accommodation is provided in a hired house in Mumbai for 6 months for 13,000 per month as rent. This is the complete explanation given. Now we have to find out. 
when the accommodation is hired by the employer then least of the following two 15 percent of salary or actual hire charges paid by the employer least of these two first of all salary what do you mean by salary in the previous video, I have given the complete definition of salary for RFA, rent free accommodation. Salary means basic plus bonus plus fees plus commission plus all taxable allowances except DA. DA will be included if it enters for retirement benefit plus any, uh, any monetary amount paid or reimbursed by the employer plus income tax or professional tax paid or reimbursed by the employer. These are the items that will fall under salary. The basic plus bonus plus fees plus commission. We don't have fees, bonus, commission. We have basic. The basic is how much? 1,86,000. So I have taken basic 1,86,000. Family allowance is fully taxable. DA is not taxable. Remember, DA is uh, not to be taken here. Because DA, if it enters for retirement benefit, then only we should take under salary. If it is not entering for retirement benefit, DA should not be taken. Now DA is not taken. Family allowance is fully taxable. We should take it. 86,400. Then hostel allowance. Taxable amount of hostel allowance we should take. How much hostel allowance? 10,800. We have taken. Academic research allowance. Taxable amount we should take. Taxable is 8,880. Now total of the salary comes to... <coughs> 2,92,018 but this is the salary for one year is the accommodation given for one year or only six months it is given only for six months so we need salary also for six months half so 2,92,018 into 6 by 12 six months so 1,46,040 is the salary for six months now the value of the purchaser is list of the following two actual rent paid by the employer the employer is paying 13,000 per month. So 13,000 into 6, 78,000. Or 15% of salary, 15% of 1,46,040, 21,906. Whichever is least, that will be, that will be value of unfurnished house. So which is the least? 21,906. 21,906 is the value of the perquisite. Value of rent-free unfurnished house. 21 nine to this you add 10 percent of the cost of furniture it is given cost of furniture 35,000 so 10 percent of 35,000 3,500 but this furniture is provided only for six months the accommodation is given for six months the furniture also given for six months the so six by 12 1750 add up you will get 23,656 23,656 is the value of rent free furnished accommodation. Now take this 23,656 here. Now take the total 4,77,736. This is the gross income from salary. That's a very important problem. This is the end of problem number 7. <clears throat> now one more problem is there, eighth one. Sri John's salary particulars for a month is in rupees are as follows: basic pay eleven thousand five hundred, DA eight thousand. These are monthly monthly particulars, salary particulars. Entertainment allowance three thousand. He is provided with rent free accommodation and the cost of furniture provided thirty thousand. Municipal rental value six thousand per month. Actual rental value seven thousand five hundred per month. Government rental value five thousand per month. Compute the value of rent-free accommodation in case of the following situations. Three situations are given A, B, C. In each situation, we have to separately find out what is the value of rent-free accommodation. What is the first case? If he is working in a state government department and the accommodation is provided in a city where the population is 14 lakh. First of all, we have to assume that the SSC is a government employee. Once if it is seen that it is a he is a government employee, rent fixed by the government is the value of the purposes. We don't require population. We don't require population of the town. Because the government employees only one rule is given by Income Tax Act. If the SSC is a government employee, whatever rent fixed by the government is the value of the purpose. Don't consider salary, don't consider population. 
ignore population. So rent fixed by the government. What is the rent? government rental value? 5000 per month. So 5000 per month. So 5000 into 12. 60,000 is the value of unfurnished house. 60,000 value of unfurnished. To this we add 10% the cost of furniture. Furniture costing 30,000 was provided. So 10% of 30,000 it comes to 3,000. We add 3,000. 60,000 plus 3,000. 63,000 is the value of furnished accommodation in AKS. Over. Sri John A. He is a government employee. Rent fixed by the government is the value of the perquisite. So value of rent free unfurnished accommodation 5,000 into 12, 60,000. 10% of cost of furniture, 10% of 30,000, 3,000. 63,000 is the value of rent-free furnished accommodation. A case completed. Now B. If he is a government, uh, if he is a non-government employee and the accommodation is provided in a city where population is 5 lakh. The second case, non-government employee. If non-government employee is there, accommodation is owned by the employer, then we have to see the population of the town. Here the population of the town is 5 lakh. It is less than 10 lakh. So it is a small town. When it is a small town, the perquisite value is 7.5% of salary. If the population of the town is less than 10 lakh, it's a small town. Value of the perquisite is 7.5% of salary. That's it. To that you add 10% of the cost of furniture. Now, non-government employee and accommodation provided in a city where population is 5 lakh. The value of the perquisite is 7.5%. Because 5 lakh means small town. 7.5. Salary. In our problem, salary means basic. Basic pay is 11,500 per month into 12. So 11,500 into 12, 1 lakh 38,000. Basic over. After basic, DA is given. Nothing is given whether DA is entering for retirement benefit or not entering for retirement benefit. So we assume not entering for retirement benefit, we should not take. DA should not be taken in salary. Third one is entertainment allowance. It is fully taxable. Entertainment allowance fully taxable. So EA, 3000 per month into 12, 36,000. So total salary comes to 1,74,000. Now value of rent free unfurnished accommodation 7.5% of 1,74,000. So 1,74,000 into 7.5% 13,050. 13,050. To this we add 10% of cost of furniture. Furniture costing 30,000 provided. 10% of 30,000 is 3,000. Add up 16,050. That is the value of rent free furnished accommodation. Second case completed. Now see it. If he is a non-government employee and is provided accommodation in a city where the population is 29.5 lakh. Again non-government employee. We have to see the city population. Population of the city. 29.5 lakh means it is more than 25 lakh. Where it is more than 25 lakh it's a big town. For big town the value of the purchase is 15% of salary. Already we have discussed all this provision in the last video. 15% of salary. So non-government employee and is provided accommodation in a city where population is 29.5 lakh. Value of rent free unfurnished accommodation 15% of salary. 15% of 1,74,000. It comes to 26,100. To this we add 10% of the cost of furniture provided. Furniture provided 30,000. 10% of 30,000 is 3,000. Add 3,000. 26,100 plus 3,000. 29,100 is the value of rent free furnished accommodation. That's all. This is the end of 8th problem. So, totally 8 problems I have completed on value of rent free accommodation. Inshallah, next video will start the other allowances. Apart from rent-free accommodation, there are other allowances also, uh, other perquisite also, sorry, other perquisites. So those perquisites will discuss and the other problems will do it on other perquisites in the next video.